Madam Speaker, it's an honor to receive time from someone who served our nation in the finest way and who knows firsthand how harmful a resolution such as this can be to those in theater. We are in the middle of a four-day marathon here. While I cannot say that I agree with all of the actions of the President in dealing with Iraq, I will not be supporting H. Conrad 63. The eyes of the world are upon this House, and there will be commentary from the Middle East to the streets of small-town America about what we do here over this four-day period even though this resolution does not carry the weight of law. When the commentary begins in the Middle East, in no way do I want to comfort and encourage the radical Muslims who want to destroy our country and who want to wipe the so-called infidels like myself and many of you from the face of the earth. In no way do I want to aid and assist the Islamic jihadists who want the green flag of the crescent and star to wave over the capital of the United States and over the White House of this country. I fear that radical Muslims who want to control the Middle East and ultimately the world would love to see in God we trust, stricken from our money and replaced with in Muhammad we trust. I'm not sure that reinforcing the existing troops by 20,000 will save us from the jihadists, and I'm not sure it will prevent chaos in the Iraq. I do hope that these additional forces will stabilize Baghdad and will lead to democracy and a tolerance of divergent views and religions in Iraq. Unfortunately, the history of the reason of that region does not bode well for such conclusions. In my view, the United States, by removing Saddam Hussein, has provided a great opportunity for Iraq to be a showcase for tolerance and understanding. Perhaps one day, Iraq may want to adopt something like the First Amendment of our country. That may only be an optimistic hope. I hope my fears and the fears of others about chaos and calamity prove false. If the Shiite and Sunni controversy escalates and the situations worsen, we could be faced with a clamor to admit thousands and perhaps millions into this country. I call on the President and our Secretary of State to not allow a mass immigration into this country with the dangers and pitfalls that it could bring to our safety and security. The terrorist would surely enter into this country in such a way as the 9-11 terrorist swam around in a sea of illegal immigration before we were struck on September the 11th. Let us vote no, and let us forestall, if not, prevent calamity, and I yield back.